Hello guys and welcome back to Persona 3 Reload. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and started accepting Elizabeth's requests. And we have quite a few. We accept- we did a couple in the real world, but a lot of these have to do with stuff that we can actually do in Tartarus. So in this episode, we're going to make our way to the next border floor, all the while we will be doing some of these quests. And hopefully we'll be at a good level by the end of this. This is- this will be another purely Tartarus episode. I'm gonna get through all of this second area within this episode, and then next episode we'll be getting back to normal, everyday stuff. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this teleporter. Oh, there's something I need to tell you. Do you remember what I said about Tartarus being divided into different areas? Well, through Penthesilea's power, I picked up an unusual signal just past the 20th floor. Something may have shifted, so I'd like you to head there and check it out immediately. We're counting on you. From Elizabeth, we know that that means we can move on. All right, we're here. As I thought, this floor is... I'm not sensing any enemies. Could you take a look around the area, Yuki? There's no telling what might happen, so be careful, all right? Is that the same dialogue we got from coming here the first time? What are these tremors? Watch out! <sighs> is it over? What was that? It's one thing just to know Tartarus changes daily, but to actually see it transform before our very own eyes. Regardless, the path is open. Let's try exploring further beyond that. As for our next goal, I can only assume that there will be a similar obstruction up ahead. Let's aim for that. I'm counting on you. Uh, I wish it wouldn't start shaking all of a sudden. My heart almost stopped. I'm worried about what else could be in store for us down the road, but since the path opened up, I guess we gotta press on. What? Something feels different about the floor up ahead. I sense something more potent, like a tangible force of will. Stay alert. That just means we get a new area. And hey, a golden shadow. Face an adversary clad in gold, maybe we'll run into rare enemy. So, that's pretty important, but another thing is look at how cool this is! All the purple around here. Uh, purple is one of my favorite colors. Uh, blue, purple, and green are like my favorite colors, so you could see why this game is one of my favorites. But yeah, welcome to Arca, the second block of Tartarus. How I forget how many blocks there are exactly. But point is, we're starting to get higher, meaning we see some new areas. Has a totally different vibe. What? A face? Yep, there's that face up there. Pretty cute, pretty creepy looking. Uh, there's a golden shadow, so let's sneak up behind it. There we go. Very nice. Hey, time. That's not an enemy you see often. Indeed. So let's go ahead and. I probably should have done a bit of fusing before this, but ah, we'll be fine. Uh, Yukari's good with Yukari does wind, Junpei does fire, so let's do electric. Nice. These guys might not even have a weakness, but it's always good to check. Also, these guys have a chance of running away, so be careful. Okay, it's just waiting for now. Does Ice Stud do anything for you? Oh yeah, also it gets two turns for some reason, I don't know why. Junpei, come on! Thank you, Yukari. I should- I should have probably given you your new bow. Come on, crit. Ah, it ran away! I forget if that, uh... I forget if that's good for the quest, if... Um, it runs away, or if you need to defeat it. What does it say here? Okay, we actually can report this, so we'll do that once we get back to Elizabeth. But yeah, other than this cool new scenery, not much is different about this area, so... It's montage time, baby. The one thing that I just want to quickly mention is, for some reason, my Reddit account got hacked. And that's not even... Reddit, my Reddit account isn't even something that I've brought up in the past before, just because, like, who cares? I don't really use... Like, I don't post on Reddit at all, I just, like go on there for 10 minutes and look at art and stuff like that and then log off for the day. Uh, ooh, Jack Frost! Uh, completely forget about my previous point. Jack Frost, like I've mentioned before, is the mascot of the Mega Ten series, and he actually is a pretty good persona for this early in the game, so... Hooray! But my Reddit, Reddit account did get hacked, and it, it made like one post that was like anti-Palestine or something like that, which sucks. Um, so, just something that I want to say, um, and I know that, like, a bigger, like, 
bigger YouTubers also deal with stuff where they get hacked by like cryptocurrency people and say and they post a bunch of videos that's promoting that. So let me just say something real quick. If you ever see me post about anything that is not related to video games or just cool stuff that I like, it's not me. I've been hacked. If I ever post a link that doesn't lead directly to a video that I made, it's not me. Do not click on the link because it is a scam. And it's very weird because like, I understand like bigger accounts, like hacking all around is horrible, but I'm confused because why go after me? Because to be frank with you, I'm a nobody. It's not like I'm really like trusted by a large audience or something like that. So why would you just go after this nobody, especially that nobody's Reddit account? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so I already used electric. And speaking of electric, oh hey, boohoo. Uh, I have weird names for some of the attacks here just because in my brain, I want, sometimes I'll forget what something is called, so I'll just give it a name that I'll remember. Um, so, I call Ice Bufu just because that's the name of the attack. I'll call Fire Fire. And I'll call Wind Wind. Uh, I call Electricity Zap and Zap moves and stuff like that. And then I call the different attacks, the different physical attacks, Sword, Arrows, and Fist. Just because those are what the icons remind me of. So, just so you know what I'm talking about whenever I do this, I'm pretty sure it's clear just from what I'm saying. Uh, Honestly. The rugged terrain, keep your eyes peeled for any blind spots. So yeah, just keep that in mind is I'll probably call something by a weird name at some point, so apologies for that. One thing that I didn't even know existed until just the other day is that there's an official webtoons by Atlas called Persona 3 Reload Beginnings that came out shortly after Persona 3 Reload released, and it's just an adaptation of uh, the from the start of the game up until uh, the battle on April 9th. And I only read through like a little bit of it. It seems fairly accurate. Um, so go read that if you're curious. I will say that the canon name is once again used in that, Makoto Yuki. Uh, which is kind of something that I want to get into in just a little bit. Is I don't fully understand why so many people are upset slash confused at there being two people in the Persona series named Makoto. Because in uh, Persona 5, there's Makoto Nijima, who is a major character. And so a lot of people, um, there is like a group of people out there who really don't like the name Makoto Yuki for this protagonist because, well, there's already a character named Makoto. But the thing is, the name Makoto Yuki was a thing way before, like years before Persona 5 came out because he was first called this in the Persona 3 movie from 2013, and the original Japanese version of Persona 5 came out in 2016. So it just doesn't really make any sense to me to be, like, weirded out by that. And, like, <laughs> multiple people exist in real life with who have the same name. Whenever you talk about it, you clarify. I see a lot of people say that, well, it'll be confusing um, when talking about like, who's who. It's like, it's so easy to clarify. Just say Makoto Yuki, or Makoto Nijima, or just say what game they are from. Makoto from Persona 3, Makoto from P5, something like that. It's super easy. And it's like, people don't have an issue with there being two Jokers in the series. Like, oh, there's Joker, and then there's Joker. But nobody gets upset over that. I say upset, but it's not like people are, like, seething with rage over this. I, I mean, maybe there are some people. But it's just, like, discourse that I don't really understand. Anyways, on a completely unrelated note, uh, I've mentioned, I think, before on the channel that I love, like, finding on the internet people who spell words in the weirdest ways. And the one that I found recently was someone who spelled the word biased, like B-I-A-S-E-D, as B-U-Y-A-S-T. And I'm not trying to like make fun of this person or anything like that, I just find it kind of funny. 
in a lighthearted way, not in a making fun of them way. One thing that I knew that I do need to correct from a previous Persona 3 episode is the way that I pronounced Hierophant is I pronounced it as Hierophant. And in my defense, when I played the original Persona 3, there wasn't any voice acting for the scenes where it showed the word Hierophant, and so my brain just had to make up a pronunciation for it, and I don't know why I didn't just use Google to figure out what the pronunciation was, but the pronunciation I came up with was Hierophant, and that's one that just kind of stuck in my brain, but whenever I'm thinking about it, I'll try my best to pronounce it as Hierophant. There's a gatekeeper on a floor not far from here. Have you healed up recently? Uh, no, but we're doing pretty good, and I'm pretty sure we could just keep going. One thing that I see a lot online is is um, two games that I've played on the channel before, Undertale and uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. Both indie games that I've heard the same thing about. I've heard both fandoms ask for movie adaptations or like animated series adaptations. But trying not to go into too many spoilers for both of those, but I might accidentally spoil stuff, so apologies for that. The reason that I don't think and like, let's say an Undertale movie would work is because the entire point of that game is cho is choosing, right? It's about choice, about what you want to do and what you don't want to do, and how those choices affect the people in the game. So if you just adapt one route, that kind of, it kind of loses that aspect of it, and the whole aspect of the player being different from the characters in the game. And then the same sort of problem arises with DDLC, because a huge part of that game is that it's a video game, right? You know, it's all about how Monica slowly falls in love with the player, and, you know, you can choose to go down different routes, but ultimately the point is that you, the player, decide to, uh, are confronted with Monica, like, killing all the club members, basically, and then you go into the game files and you delete Monica's character file, and that whole point would be completely lost and make a lot less sense in a movie adaptation. Um, but I do like the idea of doing side content with the characters and stuff like that in, in an animated form. Like, if it's just, you know, the cast from Undertale just, like, hanging around and, you know, getting up to fun antics or, you know, what the literature club is up to on just, like, a random day of the week, then I'm fine with that. That doesn't really encroach upon any uh, previously established stuff. One bit of style that's kind of lost in the Persona 3 remake is that in the original Persona 3, when Makoto would pull out his evoker, he'd spin it around a bit. Um, you know, do a bit of gun twirling, but that's uh, kind of lost here. I mean, he might be doing it, but I can't see from behind the menu here, and the Makoto here in the menu doesn't do it at all. It's not like I'm like, oh, Makoto doesn't spin his, evolve his, his evoker. Zero out of ten game. It's just, you know, pointing stuff out. And I like doing that. I like pointing stuff out. Speaking of pointing stuff out, uh, one thing that I kind of have a bit of an issue with, um, no, pay no hate to the people who make them, is um, wikis on fandom.com, because I do go there for like finding images for thumbnails and stuff like that, but sometimes there will be information on them that's just like, huh? Uh, for example, Persona 3, I think, I think this has been changed as of recording this, but uh, at the beginning of April, right before I was starting to do this series, I went to the wiki page for the Persona 3 movie, and there was a bit added that said that there was like an official re-release and dub for the movies coming out, and the link that it led to was an April Fool's joke by uh, an account that clearly wasn't Atlas, but was, you know, pretending to be Atlas as a funny April Fool's joke. But like, by the time I read this, it was like April 7th or something, I want to say. Like, well past April Fool's Day. So either they added that bit into the wiki as a joke, which I feel like kind of defeats the purpose of a wiki, 
because you're trying to find out factual information, or that was also added in as an April Fool's, like someone else added, someone that's not really affiliated with the wiki added that in as an April Fool's joke, and just no one really caught it for a week or so, which kind of sucks. Um, that's why I'll always try to go for the more official wikis, like, uh, instead of going to the Mario fandom wiki, I'll go to Mario wiki, or instead of going to the Kirby fandom wiki, I'll go to Wikirby. Uh, and once again, I mean, don't, I mean, no disrespect to the people who actually do work on the, those fandom wikis. It's just like, it kind of sucks that... I sometimes go on there and just see blatant misinformation. One thing that I think is kind of fitting as to why, as for me choosing to do Persona 3 Reload as my first uh, Persona Let's Play on the channel, is that uh, the original Persona 3 was the beginning of a new era for the series, um, which I like to cut up the series into multiple eras, uh, which is original trilogy, Persona 3 and 4 era, Persona 5 era, and then the new era that we're currently in, which starts with Persona 5 Tactica, Persona 3 Reload, and eventually Persona 6. So Persona, the original Persona 3 was the beginning of a new era for Atlas, and Persona 3 Reload was also the beginning of a new era. And so I just think that's cool that that's the first LP we'd get to do, because this game, in multiple ways, is a uh, was like the next big step for Atlas both back in the day and in the current modern day. So one thing that would kind of be cool to see is, as you know, this game runs on a calendar system. And I started this LP near when the game starts. The game starts on April 6th, and I started this LP out on, I want to say, April 8th or April 9th, somewhere around then. And so I'm interested in seeing, are the dates in-game going to sync up, uh, or at least get close to the dates in real life. Because right now, in-game, it's, uh, May 10th, but in real life I'm gonna be posting this on, like, April 26th or somewhere around then. So I'm interested to see, is there anything that's going to push us back and cause us to get closer to those dates in-game? Probably not. We're probably going to- it's probably going to be like somewhere in July by the time we finish this LP. But I'm interested to see uh, if we're not gonna sync up, how far off are we? One thing that I'm gonna stop doing starting with this LP is premieres. Um, because what a premiere is, for those of you who don't know, is on YouTube. It's a thing where you can set your video to start at and finish at a certain time. You can set a video to start at a certain time, and it'll act sort of like a live stream, except it's a pre-recorded video. So it has a chat, and you can't, like, go forward into the future parts of the video and stuff like that. And at first I was like, oh, that's kind of like, um, kind of make it seem more epic and stuff like that. But looking back, it's sort of limiting in a way. Because if you're like me, I like to sometimes watch videos in a bit of a faster speed. And so I don't want to stop people from doing that if they're uh, watching the video as soon as it comes out. Like with this uh, series, for example, I if you're coming in like just as ah, come on, if you're coming in in like the middle of the video, you're being plopped right into the middle of the plot because these games are very plot heavy. Level twelve, nice. Feel more power. Now we can hold eight personas. Alright, here's our first uh, gatekeeper. Alright, so our first uh, gatekeeper in Arca. We should be fine, so let's hop right into this. And even if we aren't, once again, I saved, so we could just redo this. Keep your eyes on me. Oh, they start off. Oh, Jinpei gets hurt. Okay, so we have two Lightning Eagles and the Will-O-Wisp Raven. So for the Will-O-Wisp Raven, so with yeah, so for the Will-O-Wisp Raven, just go ahead and get your strongest uh, ice move from your strongest persona with an ice move. And now you have a dilemma on your hands. 
The Lightning Eagles are weak to Pierce. Which we could use uh, Yukari for. But she has a good chance of missing. So let's try this. There we go, so they're all down. This is just kind of the pattern you want to repeat for a little bit. Uh, have Yukari um, try to fill them with arrows and then heal whenever necessary, and then Junpei can do whatever. Uh, you could go ahead and heal himself. Oh, sorry, Yukari. Might actually have her guard the entire time. Actually, no. We'll have Yukar. We'll have a uh, Junpei be our resident healer while Yukari uh, takes out these guys with her arrows. Please don't miss. And then Yuki use ice. And so just repeat this for the rest of the fight, and you should be good. You've been knocked down. Get up quickly. Excellent. You're back up. I'll go with. Okay, we could try to heal here, because we are on pretty low HP. You know what, screw it. All right, the enemy's down. What to do? I don't want to lower Yuki's HP anymore. So Takeba, please don't miss. Nice! Thank you so much! Okay, so now we just have one to focus on, and we'll have Junpei heal up Yuki. I'm using this! Thanks. That gives him a full heal. And then, do we have any ice... uh, related... Nope. So I'll have you heal yourself up. And then Junpei, sorry if you die this round. No, he hung on. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so... If this doesn't kill, then we'll revive Junpei. Oh yeah, this isn't killing. I was wrong, actually, it did kill. So yeah, uh, Yuki's up to level 13, so we could fuse a persona that's that high. Uh, Takaba's up to level 12. This I can fight even better. And we get Media, which is uh, Dia, but works on multiple people. <sighs> yeah, we won. Seems like we'll keep running into stronger enemies whenever we enter a new area. Akihigo will be back soon. We could always pick things up once he's ready to join us. Can't wait for Sonata-san to hop on board. Then we'll finally be a four-man band. You know, the standard for an RPG. Junpei Quest, The Legend of Junpei, Tower of Mystery. Now let us head off, comrades. Are you stupid? We don't need to... We don't need you to head off anywhere. Have you learned your lesson at all? We need your head screwed on. What do you mean? I've got perfectly good a head on my shoulders. In that case, I suppose there's no need to worry about your studies? Uh, well, about that. <laughs> oh, brave knight Makoto, let us hurry and depart! I really like that. Crap! My bladder's about to burst! <laughs> what? You should have gone to the restroom before we left! There's something with these games and always needing to piss while they're doing excursions. So I've mentioned the Persona 3 movies quite a bit. One thing that I haven't really talked about is other Persona 3 bonus content. 
I've mentioned the Persona 3 manga in passing, and I haven't read too much of it, but from what I've seen, it's not the best way to experience the story because it's out of order, mostly. I can't really say too much about its, quali its quality, though. I read the first couple of volumes, and I liked it. Um, but I would suggest uh, playing through the game first, at least. Because it does cut to the future and to stuff you haven't seen before. It's just like, oh, here's some characters doing some stuff. And I imagine to people who are just reading the manga for the first time and having not played the games, they'll be like, wait, who's this character? What are we doing here? What's going on? So yeah, the games and stuff like that just give you the natural progression of events. I would never really suggest that you, like, try... I would never really suggest you read, like, a manga or watch the animations over playing the actual games. Even Persona 1, um, I did end up reading the manga, but that was because I gave the game, like, a bunch of tries, and I was like, okay, maybe this time I'll really, really like it. And then, actual game-related content, uh, something that you might have seen in advertising is that there's an epilogue to this game called The Answer that's being added into Reload uh, this September. And I'm super pumped for it. Sucks that it's $35 DLC, though. I mean, it came with Persona 3 Fest for free, and technically Atlas might use the argument that, well, this is a Persona 3 remake, and Persona 3 Fest is different from Persona 3, so technically we're making you pay um, $35 for a whole new game, a whole new game's worth of content. I don't think that's how anyone looks at it, though. Like, Persona 3 Fest isn't a completely different game from Persona 3. It's the same game, mostly, just with some extra bonus content. And then, of course, in Portable, there was the female protagonist, Kotane Shiomi. And a lot of people were disappointed that she didn't, up, didn't end up being in this game. Uh, it makes sense, because you'd have to, like... Because they spent, like, five years developing Persona 3 Reload. So, I imagine it would take quite a, like, an, an extra, like, year at least or two, um, in order to change all the assets for the female protagonist, and then, you know, add in all the extra social links and all this extra bonus stuff. Wait. Nope. There's an enemy nearby, but... It's in a league of its own, far different from the run-of-the-mill shadows in this area. This will be a tough fight. If you're not feeling confident, then don't engage in combat. So yeah, if you see uh, red mist around an enemy, you'll know it's tough. I'll show this off just in case, but I will most likely be avoiding these guys in the near future. This is a very iconic enemy. It's also a very tough enemy, so be careful. Got its weakness in one try, though. If you've played Persona 4 before, then you'll probably recognize a lot of these enemies because, um, because Persona 4 was kind of an asset swap of Persona 3, so there were a lot of returning enemies. Oh my god, okay, we're probably gonna die here. What should we do? Um, I might just run away. Okay, uh, the way running away works is you need to ask to run away, and then a couple turns later you'll actually be able to. So, maybe a here. Then do we have any... Okay, we do have a Zeo gem. I don't know what... Oh, because since Yuki is down, we can't do an all-out attack. But... He is dizzy, so he can't get up. Steel Gigas can't get up. Okay, so now we can run away. Probably would have been... I probably could have... Uh, defeated that thing, but... I was intimidated by its... Strong attacks there, so... Unfortunately, we won't be doing that. But anyways, back to what I was saying earlier. It is disappointing uh, that we didn't get Kotane in this game. I can see why they did it. But it's still like, aw. I'm not as disappointed as some other people were, because I know that there are a lot of people that were like, this is a complete deal breaker, I refuse to play this game because it doesn't have her in it. But like, 
I the reason that I love this game isn't because of the bonus content of the answer or uh, Kotane. I fell in love the ga with the game because of just the base content that came with the game. So, so it wasn't really like anything big was being taken away because before the announcement of Persona 3 Reload, I hadn't even uh, played through the answer or uh, the female protagonist route. So it was just kind of like, uh, sucks that they're not adding in that content. Would have loved to see it. And we did eventually get the answer. And they were like, hey, maybe if uh, this makes us makes us a ton of money, we could add in uh, the, f the female protagonist in the future. But that feels like more of just a like, hey, we want to do this. Maybe we could do it, but it's not very likely. I do definitely prefer playing this version of the game over... Um, over the older versions, and that's not to like downplay any other versions of this game because I know each of them have their fans that are quite die hard, but I think that this is just the most fun to play, the most visually appealing, because uh, I like a lot of things about the original Persona 3. The battle system was not one of those things. Like, even with controllable party members, stuff in Tartarus just still felt like a slog. This game has been well received by many, though. Uh, and with that, has there are rumors of a Persona 4 remake, as well as either a remaster or remake of the original trilogy. And that'd be super cool. I see a lot of people saying that Persona 4 doesn't need a remake and that it's already perfect, but they said the same thing about Persona 3, and this is all- and this became, like, one of my favorite games of all time, so I'm completely open for a Persona 4 remake. One thing that does come with a remake, though, is that they'll have to recast the voices, and a lot of those uh, voices for the characters are super iconic, like Yuri Lowenthal as uh, Yosuke, or Johnny Young Bosch as the protagonist, and Adachi. But yeah, it's kind of a small price to pay to see the to see this old uh, game from the PS2 era like really come to life in the modern day. That makes me sound like a like a pretentious game reviewer the way I, the way that I worded that, but yeah, that's just kind of the best way that I could get my thoughts across. Anyways, I feel like I'm being a bit too negative. Like everything that I that I mention has a catch to it. So let me gush about this game for a bit because I haven't really done it all that much. Like I did it in uh, the episode where we did our first full moon operation. This game looks so cool. <laughs> like. Everything visually about this is just awesome to me. And the music is all super duper good. Like, maybe one or two tracks are like, eh, I prefer the original. But most of this music is just incredible to listen to. In my opinion, of course. If I ever say something that sounds like I'm uh, stating it as a fact, but it's a subjective thing, like, oh, this game is awesome, Know that it's an opinion of mine, and you are completely free to disagree with me at any point. I know I mentioned this previous Tartarus excursion, but I cannot wait till we get some new party members because it is getting kind of obnoxious listening to the same voice lines over and over again. Okay, let's see if we can actually defeat the Golden Hand this time. My money is on no, but you'll never know until you try. Let's try light. Yeah, it worked! All out attack. It's, it's knocked down, so... Yes! Awesome! We defeated our first Golden Hand. I mean, it's our third Golden Hand, but it's the first one that, first one that we defeated. There don't seem to be any, any enemies on this floor. That should spell some reprieve for us, but it could be... It could very well be the calm before a storm. Fortunately, there's a two-way teleporter nearby, so I'd say a quick regroup may be warranted. Indeed it is. So... Uh, we have stairs leading up there. Um... 
make sure you go back down and make sure uh, most of your HP and SP is refilled because you're about to face a lot of upcoming stuff. Also, hey Elizabeth, what have we got today? A uh, treasure hunting milestone, sweet. Got some more SP. Okay, next uh, guardian. I, for I always forget what they're called. Um, so... What? There's no teleporter. We'll just have to barrel through for now. Better be prepared for the worst. So yeah, there's no teleporter here, so you better have used the teleporter from the previous floor. All right. Okay, let's go. All right. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so we have the heretic, the heretic magus, and the grievous table. So for what to do. the Magus, you want to use Electric. Oh my God. And then use some Ice for the table. Hey, one of them is already dizzy. Oh, wind, that sucks. Oh, I'm so sorry, Junpei. Hey, uh, dodge from Yuki there. I talk about you heal up Iori. No one else got hurt, so you can ju just use Dia. I'm just getting started. Looks like the enemy's weak to ice. Junpei, try to get a critical. Nope, okay. Oh, inflicted with poison, that sucks. Also, I'm just now realizing I probably should have bought some stuff at the store to buy us new weapons and stuff like that. Uh, I'll do that next time we're out and about. I'll go with. Come! Here. Do we take more poison damage if we do a one more, or is it just a one-time thing? No, okay, so there actually is a bit of downside to doing a one more here. And also we don't get a an all-out attack, so. I'll go with. You hit a weak spot. That dealt some damage. Yori's been knocked down. Someone cover for him. <laughs> okay, let's heal up Yuki. Or at least stop him from being poisoned. What are you gonna do? Okay, thank god. Good job, Yori. Now strike back! Looks like the enemy's weak to ice. Ice and lightning. Earth electricity. You heal up Yuki. Thanks. Okay, thankfully that did pretty much no damage. Okay, can we actually get an all-out attack this time? The enemy's down. To do. Good hit. Or so. this is yes, indeed we can. I'm not sure if it'll take out the tables. Definitely won't take out the Magus. It did take out the tables. Okay, so now we can just focus all our efforts there. Sorry, Junpei, you might die. Yep. Can you help him? Uh, Bomb of Life for Junpei. And then... We don't have anything else we could really do except for just... Attack. Maybe Junpei will get a crit. I'll go with. And that... Puts an end to this mini-boss. 
Unless it survives, in which that'll be really annoying. Nice. You did such an excellent job, especially against such a strong enemy. You can- The same can be said about the battle with the large shadow. I'm surprised at how fast you've all, all improved. It's definitely all natural born talent. I think I'll make it all the way to the top at this rate. You always get so carried away. But if you're aiming for the top, I guess I'll tag along for the ride. Heh, <laughs> I see you're all as dependable as ever. There may not be a need for Akihiko or me to join your battles, though Akihiko wouldn't be very happy about that. <laughs> I'd pay to see Sonata-san pout pouting, it'd be hilarious. That's rich coming from you. What awaits us is an unknown frontier. All of you, proceed with caution. So normally on any other floor, we'd be like, okay, go back to the teleporter, go down, heal up, and stuff like that. But as mentioned, we don't have a teleporter. Instead, when we head up to the next floor, we immediately get hit with another guardian. The enemy's nearby. Don't tell me. These battles are just going to keep coming. Hang in there. Picking up another border floor, and it's seven floors from here. Sweet. I suppose that means it's. This is a border guard, in a manner of speaking. We've got our work cut out for us. I'm counting on you. So seven from now, that'd be thirty-three or forty-three. Nice. It's enemy territory up ahead. Are you sure? Are you ready for battle? Absolutely. Looks tougher than I thought, but ain't nothing stopping me. So we've got the Slaughter Twins and the Disturbing Dice. I don't believe the Disturbing Dice have a weakness, but the Slaughter Twins have a weakness to Electric slash Dark, so this is actually a perfect chance to show off a Dark move. Wait. Oh, I must have written that down in my notes wrong. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Okay, electric slash dark. Crit? Oh, no, but we did get in like a tiny bit of damage there. Junpei, can you get a crit? Nope. Guess we're using electric then. Sorry, I wrote down my notes completely wrong. I'll be sure to put on screen that that's not what you're supposed to do. And then maybe a crit from Yuki? No. Why are our crit rates so low? Ah, distress. That's the worst thing, because you start throwing away money and just... I, I think you attack teammates as well. Back up to 119 with UP. Come. Oh, come on! That's like the worst possible time to miss. He's inflicted with distress again. I think Yukari does have a move that helps us with that, though, so... Yeah, distress. Oh, inflicted with poison, sweet! Very useful, okay. Um, Now's my our main goal here is just to keep Yuki alive. It seems like he's the one that they're going after constantly, so that sucks. Yes! Okay, finally a crit. Now that they're all knocked down, we can finally use an all-out attack on them. I think if we just get the Slaughter Twins out of the way quickly, and they are pretty close to being dead, we'll have this entire thing in the bag. Junpei dodges the Bewilder, which is incredibly nice, and the and the dice looks like it's going to die pretty soon. Or not pretty soon, but die quicker than I expected. 
Yukari, go ahead and use Media, because all of us are lower in our health than we should be. Oh, come on. We're going to be using all of our HP items here, but that's fine. Did that miss? Okay, no, thank god. Whenever I don't see the cool animation of the cut-in from behind him, I always get super anxious. No crit. And now Junpei has Distress. Oh, and another crit from the enemy. Not doing too bad with health, though. And we miss on that front, or they miss on that front. No crit from Junpei, which is weird because I guess since I didn't get any of the good equipment for him. Come on. Sucks so much. Okay, now that the dice are out of the way, we don't need to worry about... Oh. Use some more of that water to heal everyone up, and then hopefully Yuki doesn't miss these next two turns. Okay, that's one, one down. <laughs> That's uh it's my turn now. Brilliant. You're back in the fight. Does our level have anything to do with us missing? Because we've been missing a lot this fight. Because maybe I'm just low leveled. Either way, we beat the mini boss, so it's fine. What are these back to back fights? Yeah, this is a first. It's like pacing anyone. I can't get a read on the pattern for these floors. There's simply too much about which we're still in the dark. We need to prepare even more thoroughly and retreat promptly when we're depleted. Um... Maybe we'd have an easier time with Sonata Senpai around. Yeah, but wouldn't he be happy about fight- Yeah, wouldn't he be happy fighting a bunch of tough enemies anyways? I can definitely see that. Nevertheless, he'd greatly increase our firepower. Well, if you plan on proceeding, then do so carefully. I'm counting on you. They keeping like, hey, wait for Akihiko to finally get on the team again, and then you can continue. But I'm pretty sure we could get through this. It will be a bit tougher. Hey, Juzumara, that's actually uh, for our quest, and that's also something we can give to Junpei. This might actually get uh, allow him to get more crits. God, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, they're telling us to get Sonata, but I'm pretty sure we could get through this. It will be tough. But I'm confident. This is a two-way one, so we can finally go back and heal. I'm glad that the Tartarus Expeditions are only once a month, because I very quickly run out of things to talk about. Um, like, I had a whole list of topics to go through, and I kind of ran out of those um, a little bit ago. So yeah, excuse me if, the, if, we con if it continues to... Excuse me if the videos start to get a bit more heavily edited as we continue pr to progress, but I'll just... Why is the floor so dang bumpy here? But I'll just completely con uh, continue to run out of things to say, so... I'm trying my best, though. I'm not very good at commentating, uh, which may make you ask, why the hell do you become? did you become a commentator for a Let's Play, then? And that's because I suck at most things, so if I'm gonna suck at something, why not suck at something I enjoy doing? Shadow spotted. What's the plan? My plan is to run away. I've finally gotten used to seeing these faces everywhere. Wait, did it just look at us? Ugh. But yeah, thankfully we were only like three floors away from the border floor. I can hold 
my own in a fight pretty damn well, don't you think? I always knew I had talent. I thought for sure we'd get a uh, snarky comment from Yukari there, but I guess not. So this is floor 40. The number probably doesn't mean much, but this is a veritable accomplishment. Keep up the good work. So yeah, we're on floor 40 now. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, you know, I think I'm getting pretty good at fighting. What the fuck was that? Yukari's just like, I'm pretty good at fighting, and then there's just some ghastly wail off in the background. One thing that I do want to start doing uh, during my Let's Plays is try to put more energy into my commentary, because, and I always think at the very beginning of sessions, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put in a ton of energy today, and then I look back on the recording and it's just like, hello guys and welcome back to Persona 3 Reload, and it's just like, ah, come on, I, I, I thought I was putting in, like, a good bit of energy, but... I don't know. I guess the energy I'm outputting in my head just doesn't quite match up to what's in reality. Aw, oh, come on, that didn't... It's very, like... I wish it was a bit more consistent on what, like, knocks the enemies down. Because unless there's just a consistency that I'm not seeing, it's just like a 50-50 chance, pretty much, on whether or not I'm actually going to knock an enemy this down. May good, this may be a good test of your skill. Focus. Okay, I know I've mentioned bef like before in this episode how awesome the music is in this game, but Disturbing the Peace is... It's like so, so good. I mean, it's... It never fails to fill me with energy, and it's just... So fun to listen to. Oh, it ran out of SP, sweet! So now we don't have to worry about too much. I, th I guess this creature's um, weakness is light, which is the only thing we don't have. So we'll just rush here. Junpei, don't miss. Thank you. That battle took way too long, but thank god it's over. And we get an Arcana Burst right here at the end. Pretty low on SP for Takaba this time, but... I think we're still good. I know there will probably be some people who go on to this and, like, are just like, you're just overreacting to this stuff. This stuff is so easy. People- some people are just different from you, man. I don't know how to- t I don't know what to tell you. Cause, like, that's something that I've seen, especially with Persona games, it's just like, ugh, this game is so easy, and they'll make fun of people who, you know, act who struggle with these games. People's brains just work differently. Your brain is more tuned to playing RPGs, some people aren't. It's just... I don't know what they gain about out of being just like a jerk over the internet. Alrighty, so back to floor 42. This will be our final boss fight for uh, this section of Tartarus, and like Mitsuru said, f uh, floor 43 is our border floor. Ready for a battle? Let's go. See, so yeah, after this we won't have to deal with Tartarus for another month or so. Move out, squad. Keep your eyes on me. Alright, this guy doesn't have any weaknesses, so... Make sure you've saved beforehand, and then... Oh, I should've done that to Junpei, I didn't... I forgot to read, and... Oh crap. Okay, so this is a boss that can identify weaknesses, and so it knows exactly what you're weak to. And so it knows exactly what it can do to knock you down, and that can cause quite a lot of trouble. It's not a lot of damage. Let's see. This. Huh? Rebellion, give that to Junpei. Oh, no. oh sorry, you Takeba. You better watch it. 
You heal. Takeba's just gonna be on healing duty for the entire battle, I can feel. No crit there. I'm gonna lower your attack. I know that probably won't do much. Speaking of not doing much. Oh, come on. What to do? Come. Here's the oh, hey, inflicted with shock. Nice. Can we get a crit? No, apparently not. Yeah, I do think a lot of my problems that I'm having here is Thanks. issues because I didn't I didn't get any new weapons and I didn't get too many too much armor because I spent a lot of my money on uh, raising social stats. So I'll try to spend a good amount of money trying to um, get some new armor and weapons. This opponent looks tough. Be on your guard. I'll give him hell. Time is go! It's gonna suck. Yeah. Why do you keep using Augie skills on me? What next? I mean, not that I'm complaining, because that means that I get a chance to actually do some stuff, but... What's next? Just to protect Makoto for a bit, I'm gonna give him the defense. Yes! Okay, thank you, Takabo, for the crit. Knocked down. I don't know if this is all out attack is gonna do much damage because our normal attacks already don't do that much. Yeah. But it's still cool to have. This opponent looks tough. Be on your guard. I'll go with. Can I get another freeze? No. We are, like, halfway done with this boss, though. Uh, what's that? Defense down? Is there anything that I can do to raise all of our defense? Doesn't look like it. Talk about just to protect you, because I know something bad is going to happen to you in just a second. And then maybe another freeze? Yes! That's perfect. Yours defense has been lowered. Watch yourself. <laughs> yes, and talk about once again with the critical. Yours defense has been lower. Watch yourself. What to do? We're so bad. That's not 
good. I won't lose. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. What's the plan? We're really close to defeating this, but just to be safe, I'm gonna get Yuki back to full health because that attack scared me. And I'm cool with uh, Takaba and Junpei going down, but if Yuki goes down, as you all know, the battle ends for us. So, uh, and another freeze, nice. I'm actually getting pretty lucky this time around. Another crit? Yeah. Gosh, it feels like the game's making up for all the bad luck I had on the previous boss fight. Very nice, okay. I don't know why we didn't get a cool splash screen, but what's important is that the battle is over. Got 4,950 XP. Nicely done. Doesn't seem like you're having any problems, though I've never underestimated you in the first place. You're performing better than expected. Uh, you're making me blush. <laughs> now I'm getting pumped up, and every day you get a compliment from Karija senpai You... er... Like doing... Well... I've... Oh... For you. Huh? Huh? Come again? You've heard what she said, stop fishing for more. No, I seriously couldn't hear her, there was like static or something. Static. Check, check, one, two, one, two. How is it? Can you hear me? Yeah, just fine. What? Was it just my imagination? Sorry, my bad. No, if you have any concerns, don't be afraid to relay them to me. For the time being, it seems like there aren't any problems, so let's get back to exploring. Huh, that's weird. Well, we're getting close to the end of this anyway, so it's not something we'll have to worry about for too much longer. But it'll just be future us's problem. Ooh, tuxedo! So, there's the tutorial for costumes, because I don't think it, it expected us to be doing all of Elizabeth's quests yet, for whatever reason. Junpei! Not only got a tuxedo, but he got a cool little hat. Nice. Also, one thing that uh, you shouldn't have to worry about is that uh, during important like story-based cutscenes, they change back to their normal outfits. So you don't have to worry about them putting on like a funny costume and then during an emotional scene, like Junpei in a top hat strolling up and just being like, "Hey, how's it going?" Is this another dead end? This is as far as we can go for now. Nice work. That's another checkpoint under our belt. Come on back whenever you're ready. So as always, we got our old document. Kurijo's Ergo Research Lab is setting up at a facility on this island. It doesn't make any sense. Even a rank and file researcher like me can tell what is about to take place on this island. Once more, we can't move past this. So all we have is to head back to the entrance, and then... A month from now, hopefully we'll be able to get through there. So yeah, we've gone through all the floors that we we can get through. Also, Elizabeth has a thing for us. Are you accepting? Let's hear the result. 20,000 yen, nice. So yeah, we've done a bunch of quests for Elizabeth, we've gone through all the floors we can, and we're currently at levels uh, 16 and 17, which is the perfect place to be at for now. So, thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to continue going back to our daily life, going through social links, and getting to relax a bit more. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye! Boy.